Hi, welcome back to another episode of Mr. Money Invest where we talk everything about the market to help you better understand how your money is doing. Now, today I want to share with you a very interesting story. And this story is about Farm Fresh acquiring this ice cream chain called Inside Scoop. This news make big headlines in the market because on one end, as entrepreneurs, everyone was jealous that, you know, just a couple of years into operation, Inside Scoop is able to exit with a big amount of money. And for investors of Farm Fresh, it's also a very interesting news because going forward, Farm Fresh is able to venture into a new business. But here's the thing. Farm Fresh, they have been selling milk and they are doing very well. So why do they suddenly pivot into a new business where they have very little experience in? Can Farm Fresh grow inside scoop into a greater business or is it the beginning of the end for Farm Fresh? Let's find out. Everybody knows Farm Fresh today. It is a great company selling milk. And over the years, since IPO especially, they have developed a wide range of products to sell. And if you go to a supermarket today, chances are you will see a lot of farm fresh product being lined up on the shelves. So much so that today, they actually command more than 50% of market share in their business. Apart from selling milk, Farm Fresh also made a foray into schools with their school milk program. This is a collaboration between uh, the company and also the Ministry of Education to provide milk to students. And since they have a farm in Australia, it's no brainer that they also sell milk products in the country as well. So these three areas are the key revenue driver for Farm Fresh today. If you look at this structure over here, you can see that all they do is trying to produce more milk and try their very best to sell the milk out to the market. But there's one problem. I mean, because they're selling milk, right? How much are you willing to pay for a bottle of milk like this? Five ringgit, seven ringgit. Now, the question is, there may be different range of milk to increase the price tag, but ultimately, we are still talking about milk it is a low end value in the value chain. Which means to say that no matter how hard Farm Fresh tries to increase the price of the milk, that's how far they could go. The only way they can increase their revenue and profit is to go into a different market. And Farm Fresh indeed is talking about penetrating into new markets. They are planning to go into Indonesia, Philippines, and Hong Kong in the very near future. But because the product is at the lower end of the value chain, when inflation kicks, like what is happening right now, they have a problem. And they have already starting to feel the pinch on their net profit. Just to give you a flavor on their net profit, uh, for the nine month FY 2023 result, in fact, Farm Fresh gross profit margin has slipped by 1.7 percentage point to account exactly for higher raw material costs and also freight costs. Now, if inflation is going to get worse, it is going to eat into their profit even more. So, how can Farm Fresh solve this problem? In order to free Farm Fresh from being at the low end of the value chain, they need to move up the value chain. That's quite obvious. Let me give you an example. Right? It's a very classic example of Starbucks. Just imagine, if Starbucks were to just sell coffee beans, how much can they fetch, right? But Starbucks is very smart by transforming coffee beans into a coffee beverage. And by doing that, a 350ml cup of coffee or an 8 ounce latte in this case, they are able to sell for 14 ringgit in Malaysia. As compared to Farm Fresh, they are only selling a 1 litre milk, which is 3 times more than this cup of coffee, but the price is half half of what Starbucks is doing. That is an example of how Farm Fresh can break this cycle by going into a high value chain product. I'm pretty sure the management of Farm Fresh is aware of this and they are trying their very best to break this cycle. So in fact, they are doing little little experiments in the market, if you notice, to try to experiment and see where is the new area that they are able to penetrate into. And not too long ago, they started this venture called Jomcha. Right? This is a kiosk concept whereby they are, they are there to test the market to see how consumers respond to their new business and new product range of beverages and also their soft serve ice cream. To date, Farm Fresh had doubled up their store count from 12 outlets in November 2022 
all the way to 24 outlets. That's double in a span of just three months. But personally, I don't think this business is going to go very far. Why? Because personally, I have visited this store itself and it's a, it's, a, it's a funny joke whereby, you know, I went there, I look at their range of beverages. It looks interesting. So I wanted to try their uh, boba latte. And to my surprise, all they did was to take out a bottle of um, farm fresh latte, those that you can buy from supermarket, pour it into a cup, and then they add boba on it, and they serve it for the price of a Starbucks coffee. I mean, who would buy that for the second time, right? So in a way, I don't think that is a good business format to run the business, but one thing, right? I think this is the best ice cream you can find in the market today. I mean, it tastes so much better than McDonald's Sunday. It tastes so much better than Family Mart's ice cream. If you have the chance, please go and try their soft serve ice cream because I think the secret there is that they use fresh milk to make the ice cream. So it, it, is, it is much more creamier and the texture is so much um, intact when you, when, when you have your first bite in your mouth. So if anything, I think this will be their early success in this Zhongcha venture and this experiment project. Now, I'm pretty sure that the management of Farm Fresh also noticed this pattern, whereby their beverage range doesn't sell very well, but a lot of people are attracted to their soft serve ice cream. So perhaps with that data, they have been scouting in the market to look for inorganic growth. I mean, just look at the design of the store itself. It looks like a kiosk that is selling steam jagong or wafer right outside the cinema. It doesn't look like a store that is selling soft serve ice cream. So in that sense, I don't think Farm Fresh has the expertise to manage a consumer brand very well. And because of that, I think Farm Fresh may want to choose inorganic growth in this area if they want to go big in the ice cream business. And with that in mind, when this news pops up, I don't think it becomes a very big surprise in the market. So at this point, Farm Fresh must have think that by acquiring Inside Scoop, it is their best line of attack to go into the consumer brand market. So the headline says that Farm Fresh is going to acquire Inside Scoop at a price of 83.9 million ringgit for 65% stake. If you look into Inside Scoop in detail, you will find that actually Inside Scoop today they have 36 outlets, right? Um, they are serving more than 10 flavors of ice creams. And apart from that, they also have other range of products like cakes and things like that. So that makes them a very um, well-known artisan ice cream outlet in Malaysia. So who owns Inside Scoop? This is very interesting. It is actually an entrepreneurship run by three gentlemen. The first one is called uh, Edmund. This guy owns 61% stake in Inside Scoop. And the other gentleman is called Derek. Derek has a 37.9% stake in the company, Hush Rajpal. Uh, this gentleman owns the remaining 1.1% in Inside Scoop. Once the acquisition is completed, Farm Fresh will own 65% stake in Inside Scoop, like what is mentioned on the headline here. And what happened is that these two gentlemen will be out of the picture with Edman left in the business with the remaining 35% stake in the company. Now, as investors, there are three questions that you need to ask. Number one, is the price fair? Is 83.9 million a fair price to acquire uh, Inside Scope from Farm Fresh perspective? Number two, does Farm Fresh have the money to buy Inside Scoop? 83.9 million is not a small amount of money. And number three, what is Farm Fresh strategy after they acquire Inside Scoop? Okay, so to answer the first question, is the acquisition price a fair value to Farm Fresh? We need to work backwards, reverse engineer to find out what is the valuation of Inside Scoop. So we know from the headline that Farm Fresh is going to use 83.9 million ringgit to acquire 65% stake in Inside Scoop. That means to say that actually Inside Scoop is being valued at a market value of 129 million ringgit, right? And according to Maybank Investment Bank, 
Inside Scoop made about 7.8 million ringgit net profit in FY 2022. So if you work out the math here, take 129 million divided by 7.8 million, you get a valuation of 16.5 times PE. This is based on last year's number. Now, if you compare 16.5 times PE against Farm Fresh own valuation, Farm Fresh is being valued at more than 30 times PE valuation. That means to say, a larger company at 30 over times PE is acquiring a smaller company at 16.5 times. PE and that is going to be profit accretion to the acquirer, in this case, Farm Fresh. So after the acquisition is completed, Farm Fresh is able to enjoy 65% of this 7.8 million ringgit net profit going forward, assuming Inside Scoop is not going to improve on their profitability. That's good news, right? Secondly, does Farm Fresh have the money to acquire Inside Scoop? There are two ways to fund this acquisition. Of course, number one is borrowing from the banks. And number two, they may use their own internal funds to pay for the acquisition. Let's run the first scenario whereby they borrow money from the banks to acquire inside scope. That means to say we have to look at their balance sheet. I'm not going to go through the whole balance sheet to find out whether they are able to loan money from the bank. So I just pull out an analyst report to show you the numbers. So from this analyst report, we can see that the net gearing of Farm Fresh, in fact, is at a net cash position in FY 2022. And probably after the acquisition, their net gearing is going to increase by just 14% um, or maybe going forward all the way up to just 20%. That means to say their balance sheet is very healthy and Farm Fresh definitely is able to loan money from the bank to fund for the acquisition with a very manageable amount of interest expenses. But the news have already mentioned that Farm Fresh is going to use internal funds to fund for the acquisition. And not just that, they are going to use a partial of the IPO proceeds to fund for the acquisition. So they are not even going to touch the coffer that is coming from the usual business operation. And to make this acquisition even more interesting is that Farm Fresh is not going to pay the entire 83.9 million in cash to the three Inside Scoop shareholders. What they are going to do is that they are only going to partially pay off um, the acquisition via cash, and this cash amount is just 63.9 million ringgit. The remaining 20 over million worth of uh, Inside Scoop is going to be paid via issuing new Farm Fresh shares to the shareholders of Inside Scoop. So, meaning to say, from Farm Fresh perspective, the total outflow of cash is only 63.9 million and not 80 over million as per what the headline has mentioned. This gives Farm Fresh a lot of buffer in terms of their cash flow and they can use the cash flow to continue to expand the business in other areas that they've already put in place in the annual report. So if you want to find out what other expansion plans that Farm Fresh have, please refer to their annual report. And finally, what is Farm Fresh going to do with inside? scope going forward. First of all, actually I've already mentioned it is that going forward because Farm Fresh has already acquired Inside Scoop, so Farm Fresh is able to enjoy the 7.8 million net profit from Inside Scoop going forward. But of course, it's not the full 7.8 million, they only have 65% stake in it, so it's a 65% of the 7.8 million ringgit. So this is the first benefit that they will get from this acquisition. Number two, Farm Fresh intends to open one new outlet every month from now on. And that means that by the third quarter of 2024, Inside Scoop should have roughly 50 stores in Malaysia. That's a very big expansion plan for Inside Scoop. Which means to say that next time, two years down the road, when you go to any shopping malls, you are able to see Inside Scoop stores and you're able to enjoy good ice creams thanks to Farm Fresh investment into Inside Scoop. And last but not least, Farm Fresh intends to venture into consumer packaged products or consumer packaged goods. What does it mean? 
Basically, it just means ice cream tubs, lah, those that you can find in supermarkets. In fact, they have a very ambitious target to aim to see 55 to 65 million ringgit in this new consumer packaged goods segment, which translate to roughly 5% market share in two years' time. If you're not sure what that means, basically it means that going forward two years down the road, if you go to a supermarket and if you look into the fridge, about 5% of the shelf space should be filled up with inside scoop tubs instead of other brands of ice cream. Now, everything looks good, right? And everything is based on existing information that we can get from the market and some professional analysis that we can find from investment banks. But this is my thought. Numbers can only present that much, right? Ultimately, we are talking about farm fresh, venturing into a business area that they are not familiar with and if they don't manage it well, it may turn into a disaster for shareholders in the long run. Apart from looking forward to a good ice cream, ultimately, why do we go to Inside Scoop store? It's because they have such nice environment for you to dine in. You know, you can pick and choose the flavors of the ice cream that you want to try. And then after that, only you choose which ice cream you want to uh, consume. On top of that, they also have nice ambient surroundings uh, that make customers want to spend a little bit more time there with their friends and family. And these are all part and passes of the value add that goes into the price of the ice cream that creates that profitability for all these artisan ice cream chains. Now, Farm Fresh intends to move inside scoop into consumer packaged goods product. That means Farm Fresh intends to go head on with brands like Nestle, right, that is dominating the market today. This is pretty much a red ocean strategy. Going into consumer packaged goods market, of course, is a great opportunity for Farm Fresh. But what they need to do by doing that is to come up with more flavors, expanding the capacity to produce more ice cream tubs and being placed into more places into supermarket because their competitors are brands like Nestle, which have big pockets, big balance sheet to actually fight against inside scoop. So that is a very, very tiring exercise and that may erode farm fresh profitability at least in the short run. Moreover, it also put inside scoop as a brand in a limbo because think about it, right? Would you go to a Hagen Dazs outlet today? Because chances are you're able to buy the same ice cream in a 7-Eleven store just next door right at a much cheaper price or more so what is the value of this artisan experience for Hagen Dazs today so i think farm fresh needs to be very careful when it comes to trying to expand inside school business whether it is via the consumer packaged products or is it continue to grow their outlets in malaysia if i had the chance to talk to the management I think perhaps what I would share is that maybe to keep that artisan flavor of inside scoop in Malaysia, that means to say focusing on the outlets in Malaysia and perhaps use the consumer packaged products to penetrate into new markets, perhaps into Indonesia where there is no presence of inside scoop over there yet. So what they can do by doing that is to allow the consumers in the new markets to try the flavors of inside scoop ice cream and if they like it and then only introduce the artisan experience there in the new market, I think that way consumers will be more receptive of that idea. But by just doing the whole exercise the other way around, I just think that this is going to be destructive to the brand equity of Inside Scope in the long run. Well, that's what I think. But what comments do you have about this strategy? Tell us in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and like our channel if you like the content today. See you again next time.